Okay then, so if you remember, way back at the start of this series, I said that Laravel uses an MVC approach. Now, so far we've seen the view, which is the V in MVC, but we've not seen the model and we've not yet seen the controller either. So I'd like to unlock the next piece of the puzzle by talking about controllers in this video. So we know, hopefully, that when a request comes into Laravel, the appropriate route handler function handles what we should do when we get that request. For example, if we go to the forward slash pizzas route, then this function fires right here. It defines some data and returns a view, pizzas, and passes that data into the view. If we go to forward slash pizzas, forward slash ID, we grab that wildcard, pass it into this function, and then return a view where we pass that ID into the view. Okay, so these functions right here are firing dependent on what route we go to. And this approach where we define these functions inside the routes file itself next to the route, that's absolutely fine. But if you think about it, in the future, we could have many more routes in this file and we could use more complex logic in each function. So what it would be better to do is to create an external file which is going to register all of the callback functions for each set of routes. And that file is going to be called a controller. So a controller is just a special class in Laravel. And inside that, we're going to define a load of different route handler functions. Then we use those functions right here instead of creating them directly in the route itself. So this is going to make our code leaner, more reusable and easier to maintain. Now, we don't use a different controller for every single route. We wouldn't do that. Instead, what we do is use one controller for a specific group of routes. And that one controller would contain numerous functions for that group of routes. For example, all of our pizza route handlers should be managed by a single controller, a pizza controller. Now, if we had another set of routes for users, like forward slash users, forward slash users, forward slash an ID, etc., they should all be managed by a user controller. So in our example, we'd use a pizza controller just to control these two routes right here, forward slash pizzas and forward slash pizzas, forward slash ID. And in the future, there might be more pizza routes. So we'd define more functions for those inside our pizza controller. OK, so let's create a controller now inside our project. Now, we can do this in one of two ways. First of all, we could manually create the file or we could use Artisan, which we've seen in the past to spin up a local development server. So to do that, I'm going to open up the terminal and I'm going to add a new terminal at the bottom. And I'm going to say PHP Artisan make and then colon. And it's going to be a controller. And then we give this controller a name. Now, this is going to be called a pizza controller. So this is a naming convention. Whatever the data is, in our case, a pizza, starting with a capital letter, then controller, capital letter again. So press enter. And this is going to make that controller for us. We can see controller created successfully. And it places it inside the app folder, inside HTTP, inside controllers. And we can see this pizza controller right here. So it's just a class which extends controller. And inside this class, we can define our different functions, which are going to fire when we receive requests for our pizza routes. So we need to define two different functions in there. We need to define a function which does all this stuff and a function which does this stuff right here. So let's first of all do this one, which is forward slash pizzas. So I'm going to create a new public function inside this class now. So I'm going to say public function, and I'm going to call this index. Now, this is a naming convention for this kind of route when it's just forward slash. So when it's just forward slash pizzas in our case. Now, we're going to talk about naming conventions in its own separate lesson later on. So don't worry too much about that for now. But this function that I'm going to define inside the pizza controller is called index. And it's going to be for this route right here, forward slash pizzas. So inside this function, what we need to do is all of this stuff that's currently registered here. So I'm going to cut it from there and I'm going to paste it inside this function. Now, the second one I'm going to do is going to be for the single pizza right here. So forward slash pizzas forward slash ID. And that one is going to be called show. Again, this is a naming convention and we'll talk about this later on. So public function show like so. And inside here, 
we're going to paste all of this stuff so just this in fact so cut that and paste it right here now remember we need to take in the id into this function much like we take it into this function so i'm going to cut it from here and paste it here and that is our controller pretty much done we've just defined these two functions index and show for the two routes that we're going to use so now instead of defining the functions right here in the routes themselves what we can do is get rid of that like so and i'll get rid of this one and now we can just reference these functions on our controller and by the way when we define functions on a controller we call them actions okay so these two actions now will control these two routes and we just need to reference those actions as a second parameter or second argument inside the route so it's going to be inside a string and first of all we say the controller so that's the pizza controller whatever the controller is called and then we say what action we want to use and we do that by saying at sign and then the action so in this case it's index because it's called index right here and over down here we can say pizza controller at and it's going to be show and by the way i said that this was a naming convention it doesn't mean that you have to name these things index and show you can call them what you want it's entirely up to you i'm just going to follow along with the naming convention that a lot of laravel developers use so anyway now we've done that and this should all work exactly the same way all we're doing is handing control to our actual controller instead of defining the function right here in this file so when a request comes in for this route forward slash pizzas it's going to look at this and say okay i need to use the pizza controller and look at the index action or function on that controller and fire that so it does that and it fires this function which does exactly the same thing defines the data returns the view and when they go to this route forward slash pizzas forward slash id it says okay i'll hand control to the pizza controller again and this time i'll fire this action the show action so it fires this function it takes in the id automatically as the function before did and it returns this view details with that id so we've not changed any of the functionality right here all we've done is change the architecture of our code we've created a pizza controller so we can outsource all of the logic of these functions and that keeps our routes file much cleaner and it externalizes all the logic into a separate place it's going to make our code in the long run much more reusable and modular and that's a good thing so now if we save everything what i'm going to do is come to the browser i'm going to cross my fingers and hope this all works still so let's just go to forward slash pizzas and see if we get the pizza list we do and everything still works and then let's go to forward slash four five six and everything still works so there we go my friends that is your introduction to controllers we are going to be using them more as we go forward so don't worry if you don't fully understand them just yet we are going to be talking about them a lot more but in a nutshell all they do is register actions or functions which fire when certain routes are visited